Today, we're going to learn how to use Excel for the study of statistics. If you are third sem students in year 2022, yes, this video is actually dedicated for your coursework in this semester. Before we start, I'd like to remind a few things that this is uh, not the answer for the coursework, but it's more to a tutorial or guide on how to use Excel, to learn about the functions, to, to do your coursework. Okay, so the learning outcome for today is to learn basic functions and to learn how to plot the probability distributions, especially for the normal and high square distributions. And then we're going to learn how to compute confidence interval using the Excel function. So first of all, what, how, to, how can we generate a random number? So Excel provides a few functions and one of them is rand, okay, rand for random. So it returns a random number between zero and one. So when you double click the function or you can press, just press the tab button and you can get the number in between zero and one randomly. So you can just press F9 to refresh the Excel and you can see how the number generated. So this is a good function that we need it to produce a random probability for a few function that we're going to use today. So let's see the first function today is norm.inv, which means inverse. So this one, it can produce a value of x based on the probability. So let's try to key in the formulas. So equal norm, normal dot inverse. So you can read the description here. It returns the inverse of normal cumulative distributions. So when you double click the functions and you can see it provides you the details of the parameters that you're going to need to input into the Excel. First thing is about the probability. So let's try to input, let's say 50%, 0.5. And then we should put in the value of mean, which is 10. And then the standard deviation, which is the square root of variance. So just press SQRT for square root and then put in the value of two. Okay, and then enter. So you can see it gives you the value of 10, which is logic because 50% uh, is pointing to the center of the normal distribution graph. As we have the mean of 10, so it should be the value of 10. So you can try to play it around okay, based on what we have learned in your syllabus. So for to, to do the coursework, what you need to do is just replace the probability with the random. So with the random probability, you can produce random number from a normal distribution with the required mean and also the variance. So the next thing is we need to generate 500 observations or maybe 10, 20, 30. So what you need to do is select a cell and click the right bottom of the cell and you're going to pull it. Okay, so pull as long as what you need. So for example, you need 10. So just pull it to 10 cells. So you can check with here, okay, count 10 means that 10 numbers is selected. So if you need 500, so just pull from the row two to the row of 501. Okay, so 501. So now you have 500 data, okay? Random data from a normal distributions. So before we proceed, maybe uh, we can have a look on something. So you can go to the tab insert recommended chart. So you can see there are a few recommended chart or all the chart here. So what you can do is you're going to pick the histogram to see the data distributions. So you have learned about normal distributions. So you should know how the data is distributed that it should be a bell shape. So here you can press the F9 on your keyboard to refresh the Excel to see how the data generated randomly. So no matter how it changed, so you can see it's still a bell shape and the center should be around 10, okay, which means that it has a mean of 10 and the width of the graph should be almost similar and as this is uh, refers to the variance that you put into the function. So you do not need this in your coursework, but this is just for the illustration of the data. So the next thing we're going to look at is the second function, normal distributions, which is to obtain the probability, as you need to plot the probability distributions. So what you need to do, just gain the function equal norm dot this. So it returns the normal distributions. Double click it. So you need the value of x, which is the cell here. So click it. So it will auto generate a B2 value. So B2 refers to the column B, row 2. Okay, data in uh, the cell in column B, row 2. So next is to put in the value of mean, which is 10, standard deviation, square root of 2. And then the next thing is cumulative. So if true, it will give you the cumulative distribution function. And if false, is probability mass function. So we need the false one. Okay, so you can try with the true and you can see the graph later on. Okay, you can do it yourself. 
So next thing is going to generate all the probability yourself. So beside pulling the cell, and what you can do is just double click on the right bottom of the cell. So it will generate all the probability automatically in less than one second. Okay, so pretty simple. So next thing is we need to plot the probability distributions. So highlight all the cell, you can just uh, type Control A, okay, click Control A on your keyboard. So it will highlight all the cell here, go to the insert, recommended chart, and you can see this is what we need, okay, the scatter chart, which is used to see the values, okay, that uh, we have here. So you can see it's a bell shape, okay, as what you can see also from the histogram, okay. So this is what we have. So this is the probability distributions, which is expected for a normal distribution data. So press F9, so you can see how the data changes, but no matter how it is, so the center is still at around 10, okay, around 10. And you can see the width is almost the same. Okay, so the width is actually determined by the value of variance. So if you do the second type of distributions, which has the variance of four, what you should expect is the width of the graph is wider, okay, because it has more, it has higher value of variance. So you can try yourself and observe the changes because this is what you need to learn in the coursework. So next we're going to look at the chi-square distributions. So these are the two functions needed, which is quite similar with the function we have in the normal distributions. We have chi-square, SQ stands for square inverse dot RT, where the RT stands for right tail. And we also have the chi-square distributions dot RT. So now let's try to do the things. So to generate the random number from chi-square distributions, so we shall use the first one that equal to a function of chi-square dot inverse dot RT. So you can see there's another function here, which is the left tail. So to differentiate between these two functions, actually uh, it can depends on the degree of freedom that you need to use. For degree of freedom of one, we will use the right tail. And for the degree of freedom of three or higher than it, than the three, you will use the another one left tail instead. So the reason is because of the, maybe the feature of the graph, that you, also, you can observe it in the chi-square distributions. So just cut it short that we're going to use an RT for the degree of freedom of 1. And for the 10 and 30, you just use the chi-square inverse of the left tail probability. So for the right tail, okay, just click it. And uh, for the probability, you also use the SAM when function. And then for the degree of freedom of 1, just press 1. Okay, and then enter. So you can generate the random number for from the chi-square distributions. So what you need to do is just uh, pull it to up to maybe row of 501 if you need 500 observations. But for the demo here, maybe I just pull it up to 20 samples just for the demo purpose. So the next thing that we need to do is to produce the probability using the second function. So now here is also the same equal to the chi-square dot this dot rt. So for the degree freedom of 10 and 30, you shall use the first one, okay, dot this without the right tail. But for the degree feeder one, you shall use this one. And then what you need to do is click the cell again, a column B, row two, and then key in the degree freedom, one, enter. So the next thing is just double key, and you can get all the data in just one click. Okay, it's simple. So I think this is a great tool for you to use, and you may need it in future for work or any data handling. So the next thing is we're going to plot the probability distributions that has just highlight all the cell, go to the insert, recommend the chart, and what you need to do is just select the scatter chart. Okay, it's a suitable chart to illustrate the probability distributions. So this is the sky square distributions, and don't forget to use the functions for the degree freedom of 10 and 30. So I think that's all for the chi square uh, for the task one in your coursework.